A blissful evening to all. I joyfully welcome you all to the session on Habits for Winning by Dr. Anne Mary Fernandez, the first woman registrar of Madras University and also the first woman registrar of Karanya University, Coimbatore. This virtual meet is organized by the members of the We for Youth team. Please do visit their website. We for Youth team have a website with the URL www.weforyouth.com. Abdul Kalam said, the nation's wealth is the young generation of the country. Realizing this mission to nurture the young minds, the members the of the We for Youth team are working towards equipping teachers, parents, awesome. and youth to create a positive impact on the next generation. The members are passionately working on reinforcing best practices, habits, ideals, and good values to foster effectively the next generation. The team strives to improve the youth's inner well-being, strengthen, strengthen their reasoning, and develop holistic strategies that will help youngsters cope with the challenges in our society and reach their true potential. Participants and viewers can also visit their YouTube channel, We for Youth, and recommend it to young minds to benefit from the resources. The website and the YouTube have been started to help the youth reach their full potential. We for Youth team understands that youth are going through a lot of stress in daily life. They struggle with many questions, doubts, anxiety, and they are being influenced by the social media and friends. The We for Youth team helps the youth and through their videos, motivates them to a signpost with the right direction and to make the right decisions. We for Youth team also recognizes that parents and teachers have a great influence on the young minds. The YouTube channel produces and upload supportive videos for parents and teachers to encourage the youth. Also videos are produced and shared, which can help the youth to be in the right direction and also help them in their emotional well-being. And these videos are also available on their website. Once again, I request you to subscribe to the we for youth YouTube channel and do visit their website www.weforyouth.com. On that note of introduction, may I now request Mrs. Lindsay Prasad, BE MBA, experienced in business development in healthcare industry, and currently she's a writer and an educationalist consultant by passion to welcome the speaker and the participants. Thank you, ma'am. It's my pleasure to welcome our esteemed guest, Dr. Anne Mary Fernandez, a woman leader who embodies excellence and motivation. She is an inspiration to many, and we are fortunate to have her with us today. I have been a student at I being a student at Karunia University many years ago, where Ma'am was the registrar and the dean. I consider it an extra special honor to welcome her into our midst. With over 30 years of teaching experience and over 17 years of experience in educational administration, she was the first woman registrar of the University of Madras and, and the Karanya University. She has done her PhD in economics, specializing in human capital and development economics. From being a resource for UGC to being a peer team member, member coordinator and chairperson for MAAC peer teams, she is an experienced trainer who envisages change management, embraces value systems, and creates an environment for research and development. She is also a person who is greatly interested in the social sector and has collaborated with NGOs and voluntary organizations for assisting in community development, gender, and child development programs. She has very many accomplishments and qualifications under her belt, which by itself could, could go on for the entire length of this meeting. Her story is one that will inspire and motivate you to be your best selves, to dream big and to work towards achieving our goals no matter the obstacles you may face. I'm reminded of the quote 
that says, when you do some good work, it inspire, and if it inspires others, then you have just created the ripple effect. I am a believer of ripple effects, and I am convinced that if we listen with an open mind and receive ma'am's word with eagerness and enthusiasm, her achievements will create a ripple effect in our lives too. So without further ado, I give a warm welcome to Dr. Anne Mary Fernandez and all the participants present here. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Lindsay, for your warm note of welcome. She's a leader par excellence, a woman of substance, an academic trailblazer, who's not only a woman of many firsts, but also a spearhead of excellence and a deeply spiritually anchored person. May I invite Dr. Anne Mary Fernandez, the first woman registrar of both Madras University and Karunya University to speak on Habits for Winning. Over to you, ma'am. Very good evening to one and all. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers of We the Youth for yet another opportunity to connect with the youth of today. The youth of today are really a very talented group of people. And I don't know whether all my years of experience will really be able to inspire them. But nevertheless, uh, I'm making an attempt and uh, I'm, I really appreciate all those of you who have joined in or would be following this uh, video uh, meeting or clicking on to this link or even viewing this program later on. It's a beautiful evening. And today we are going to look at some of the habits which are needed for winning in life. So when I thought that I'm speaking to Generation Z, as you are called, the young youth of today are called Generation Z. And Generation Z, uh, really has no time for long winding speeches or kind of, uh, you know, uh, advices, but they get hooked on to something when it's interesting. And therefore, I thought that the best way to address you, Generation Z, is to draw a parallel with the game of, game of cricket. You know, all of you, many of you are hooked on to games. I know that many of you will be uh, having your own favorite computer games, but since I don't play these computer games, I'm not conversant with it. Maybe I'm conversant with cricket, so we will take cricket as the game from which we can learn how to win. I'm sure all of you would have watched the, uh, the T20 matches, the one day matches and the test matches, and maybe some of you have also fans in the uh, in, the, in, in the form of various cricketers. And these days, women cricket has also become very popular. So I am drawing a parallel from this game just to make you understand that life is also like a game. Since you people are so much involved in activities like gaming, uh, I felt that I should draw a parallel there and see that you learn about winning from understanding how games are played. Now, it... I don't need to tell you how games are played, but I need to remind you about what we need to keep in mind when we play a game. And we are all playing a game called life. You and I are playing a game called life. I'm very much into it since I've lived it for the last 69 years. And you are new to it because you're just entering. You are in the phase of growing and entering into the challenges of life. So, in order to play this game, it is very important, the game of cricket also. It is very important to understand the arena in which the game is being played. For example, the, whether it is being played at the Oval or the Ashes or in Kotla or in Bombay, the stadium, we have to understand the arena in which the game is being played. Similarly, in life also, we have to understand the background in which, the milieu in which we are living, and where this game is being played so that we understand how we can uh, carry forward to win. Then we have to understand ourselves and the team. So we are not alone. We are here with a team of people. So we have to understand our team. And then 
After that, we also have to understand the opposing team. Not everybody would be with the same ideas like we have. There are people who have opposing and different ideas. And therefore, we have to understand the opposing team. Then there is the audience. You know, when you play to a home audience, you have lots of people cheering for you and you are able to put in your very best. But when you're playing before the audience of, uh, of, of another country, then the team is not so confident because they don't get the same amount of cheering. And you see that there are a group of people who go along as cheerleaders to cheer these people and to encourage them to put in the very best. So you have to understand the audience. Then you have to understand the rules of the game. Cricket has got its own rules. So we have to understand the rules of the game. What are the rules? That is in life, we have to understand what are the rules by which we have to live. In this world, there are many rules. For example, there are laws of the country. There are unwritten, unspoken laws, which are called as manners, manners and mannerisms and uh, good behavior and things like that. So these are all part of the rules of the game of life. And then you have the referees uh, who make the umpires in the game of cricket. And we call them also as referees because they make decisions. So there are people who make decisions in our life. Then, and last of all, there is luck. Luck also plays a very important role in the game of cricket as it does in the game of life. And finally, there is a philosophy with which the game is played, right? Cricket is played with a philosophy. Uh, what is the philosophy of the game? The philosophy of the game is to maximize, I mean, to ma take maximum number of runs and uh, to see that you don't get out, but you're able to uh, score more than the opposing team. And the philosophy of the game is that uh, you put in your very best and luck plays a role in whether you win or lose. There are many other factors. All these factors which I have just li listed above play a role in the, game, in the team winning the game or losing the game. So similarly, dear friends, dear young friends, uh, the game of life is also very similar. You know, we have to take into consideration these various factors if we want to win. And we have to play the game in such a way that we will be able to uh, uh, make the best out of these different situations so that we can uh, get the best out of life. Now, uh, to draw a parallel and bring it to our own context, let us look at the arena in which we are living or the arena in which the game of life is being played. Now, this arena is the world in which we live. As it is commonly said, the world is our oyster and we live on planet Earth. I should say that to be born is to be gifted because, you know, uh, life is a beautiful experience. And uh, to experience life is to experience the beauty of the planet called Earth. Now, we are privy to enormous resources in this Earth. No, we have the sky, we have the air, the water, the land, we have energy, we have wind. So we are privy to all these resources and we can make use of them uh, for our own benefit. Uh, now, we also know that these resources are getting depleted and uh, that there's a constant search for alternate resources, right? So here is an opportunity for us, you know, so that we can also contribute towards, uh, the, uh, to, towards the upkeep of the earth and its environment. Then we also live in a digital age, an age of constant information, instant information, instant gratification, instant distractions. Everything is instant, food is instant, no, we live in an age where everything is instant. At the click of our fingers or at the click of a button, we are able to access things. Now, we are also living in an age where there is something called artificial intelligence, which is coming up very fast. And uh, you must have heard in recent days of chat GPT and Brad, which is being launched by uh, Microsoft and Google. So these uh, devices are really changing the world. It's changing the whole education scenario. 
uh, it's changing the whole objective of uh, what a human being should do because machines are taking over. Most of the repetitive tasks which we do are being taken over by machines. And some of the creative tasks also, for example, chat GPT is uh, capable of writing essays, writing uh, research papers and theses. So I don't know. So they, so these machines have also entered into the creative realm. So this is the world in which we live. So even creativity is being challenged by artificial intelligence and these bots like chat GPT and Brad. We are also living in an age of unreason and irrationality. This is because uh, really for a person like me, it is difficult for me to understand certain things which are happening in our world. They are brazenly false. They are brazenly things which were not acceptable in the previous, uh, in the previous decades, but have become acceptable now. So we have to take it, we have to take uh, factor those things right in. For example, uh, if you take uh, the media, there's so much of information out there in the media. It's difficult for us to know what is true and what is not true. Of course, there are means, you young people are smart enough, you can go and fact check. But the whole idea of fact checking is new because when we were growing up, anything in print or anything which was uh, broadcasted through the radio was taken as fact and true. But today that is no longer the case. You need professional people who will fact check, check or people who are conversant with the methodology of fact checking. So the whole, uh, it, is the, it is an era of irrational, ir irrationality because it's not possible for us to know what is true and what is untrue. And the line between uh, light and darkness is really blurred. We live in a gray world. There is an increased polarization of the world. People have extreme ideas today. So there is one group which would say that democracy is the best form of government. The other group would say, no, no, it's better to have an autocracy or a one person regime. And we see this happening right through the world. We see old systems becoming obsolete. You know, we see uh, many old systems becoming outdated, obsolete, uh, and new systems taking that place. For example, um, if you take the uh, political system, you know, we all lived in an era where democracy was said to be the best form of government. But now democracy itself is under threat because of you know, all these devices which have come in, social media, the other media, electronic media, and uh, various kinds of devices by which you can influence people uh, much beyond the scope of what is true into the realm of what is not true. And therefore elections these days are no longer uh, considered to be uh, fair and free and democratic. So there's a challenge to democracy. Market mechanism is collapsing. You know, the market was supposed to be very fair because it was a system which uh, consisted of a large number of buyers and sellers who couldn't be manipulated. But today, with the help of artificial intelligence and, uh, and large data sets, we are able to manipulate the market and get the results which are needed. Retail businesses have given line to online businesses. Currency and banking and accounting systems are severely challenged. We have new forms of all these things happening. And then we also have, we are also moving towards a world where many tasks are being taken over by machines and therefore into a kind of a jobless world. So I have just tried to spell out the arena in which the game is played. The arena in which we, the game is being played is not simple, it is very complex and it is getting more and more complex by the day. So in a way, uh, I could say that for, for a person like me, it's complex, but maybe for young people like you, uh, it is really good because you know you you have things which we never had before. Now uh, you have artificial intelligence, you have machines to help you, you have information at your fingertips. Um, you really don't need to uh, strain so much in order to uh, get answers. So in a way, uh, it may be it may be more favorable to young people than it is to old people like me, but then this is the arena in which the game of life is being played. There are also a lot of distractions for you because of all this instant gratification and instant, uh, uh, what you call food and instant things. These are all, 
also the downside of uh, technology, the downside of uh, the modern world. So there are many things which can distract you. And like the game of the, the race run, ran by the rabbit and the tortoise, uh, the rabbit had distractions. And then he kind of uh, took things for granted and he went to sleep while the tortoise won the game. So be careful. Uh, if you really fall prey to such things like browsing, uh, gaming, and uh, constantly being on digital media, then you may really uh, lose out on understanding the world in which you live and making the maximum out of it. So there are good things and bad things, and young people like you should be aware of this arena in which you are playing the game of life. Now, coming to yourselves, uh, the team. See, so you are not alone. You have a family you have your friends, you have a social circle, and you have a professional circle if you're working. So these people are the team in which you're performing. So your performance is not individual, but it is a team effort, and you should master team skills. So get into the habit of you know, working with teams. Only when you work today, you cannot work alone because it is a world which is very complex and people specialize in various activities. And unless you work with the team, you are good at something, others are good at something else, and you all work together in order to achieve the objective. So winning is not just about you. It is about your team. It is about the people who are also, who are all surrounding you. So that you, have, you should be aware of. You should also be aware of the opposing team. There are people who don't agree with you. There are people who hold different viewpoints or different worldviews. Now, they are also a part of your environment. And if you want to win, then you should understand these people as well. You should also take trouble to interact with them, understand them, get to understand their strengths and weaknesses. In playing a game of cricket, the team tries to master the weaknesses of the opposing team and the strengths of the opposing team and then plan their strategy in order to win the game. So similarly, if you want to win in life, you have to understand not only your team, but you also have to understand people who are not having the same ideas as you do, who have opposing world viewpoints, and who are also working with you or working or, or parallelly in the same environment in which you are. And it is, unless you understand their strengths, weaknesses, it is difficult for you to really win the game of life. So now you, you have to, you also have to understand yourself as, as, a, as a member of this team. You have to, you understand yourself in close proximity to the people with, with whom you live at home, at the workplace, at the school or the university or people of uh, groups which are holding opposing views, both both views which are yours and opposing, you need to understand. There is the audience. The audience is the community and others whom you're engaged with on a day-to-day -day basis. So the audience, we, we, we live in a large world and we need to interact with people who are not totally connected with us. Uh, we, we live in a community and we have to have communication skills to communicate with different types of people in the, in the world. Uh, in order to carry on our daily business, there are n number of people whom we meet who are not immediately connected with our purpose in life. So we also have to learn how to communicate with these people. Then we have to know the rules of the game, namely the laws of the land, the rules re relating to our professional ethics, the rules of good health, the rules of maintaining good physical fitness, and mental fitness, emotional fitness, uh, rules concerning mannerisms, uh, rules concerning good behavior. We have to be aware of this because we have to play by these rules in order to win. If we don't play by these rules, we get disqualified. In life, getting disqualified is, uh, you know, getting punishment, uh, being sent to jail and uh, things like that, or being fined. So if you don't follow these rules, then like in the game of cricket, you could be sent back to the pavilion 
or you know you could be fined if you are using abusive language or you are tampering with the ball you can get banned from the game you can be sent out of your job or whatever so you have to be familiar with the rules by which the game is played then you have the referees or the umpires so these are the bosses or the people in authority you also have to understand these people they are human beings they have their likes and dislikes and uh, they are not entirely objective sometimes they try to be objective but at sometimes they are subjective as well and therefore we should try to understand their mentality and understand their mindset and accordingly you know devise the game which we are playing so that we can be successful and so that we can win and finally there is luck luck also plays an important role when the coin is tossed you know on that depends upon whether you're going to bat first or you're going to bowl so same same way in life you know very often uh, luck also decides upon what you need to do sometimes we want to do something but luck doesn't favor us and fortune leads us into other streams where we have to accept things and do according to what is happening to us so here uh we have to depend upon time and tide we have to look at time and tide so i am not saying that you should be superstitious but you we should be aware of factors whether time and tide is favorable for you uh you don't need any astrology or you don't need uh, any kind of uh, you know uh, prophecy or prophet to tell you whether time or tide is right your inner sense tells you that it's now now is the right time for me to do this or now is not the right time let me wait so you have to uh, use your rationality in order to decide uh, whether the time and tide is right for you and for this you need spiritual guidance for this you need spiritual guidance because you need to uh, uh, keep in touch with the almighty with the one who has created you who puts these desires in your heart who puts these feelings into you and then if you if you are tuned in on the spiritual wavelength you will not make a mistake with regard to time and tide so these are factors which have to be taken in when you play the game of life now what does it mean to win in this game of life okay uh in order to win in this game of life you need in in cricket you need to see how many runs you must make how many wickets you must take so whether you're going to win the trophy are you still in the game so these are factors which uh, determine your success in the game of cricket now <clears throat> what does it take to say that you are a winner in life what does it take to say that you are a winner in life i should say that all of us are winners all of us are winners the very fact that you and i are alive today and we are uh, conversing with one another i am talking to you and you are listening to me uh, shows that we are winners you know there are so many things uh, out there which could have destroyed us there are meteor there are earthquakes which can take place there are meteors which are falling from the sky there are n number of uh, accidental things happening all around us and the fact that we have survived despite all these things all these n number of things which are happening to us or could happen to us shows that we are winners okay so in a way winning doesn't really mean that you have to carry the trophy home right even in cricket people who don't carry the trophy home still win prizes they win the uh, highest scorer highest wicket taker so there are very all of us are winners so don't think that the winners are only few people and the others are losers there are no losers you know all of us are winners at some point or the other if you have lived your day purposefully and you come to the end of it satisfied you are a winner you are a winner okay so what does it take to what does it take to understand this and to live by this so that you can be happy satisfied so what are the ultimate goals which you which make you a winner the ultimate goals which make you a winner is happiness and satisfaction if you have happiness and satisfaction at the end of doing a task you have won 
it doesn't take an opponent to dis to to defeat in order to win in life in that way uh, it is life is something which always has its own rewards so you may sometimes be depressed sometimes you may be stressed out sometimes you may be sick but these are only temporary setbacks because as long as you are alive you are still in the game right as long as you and i are alive we are still in the game we may have been bowled out or we may may have been uh, run out but that's temporary there is another game to play the next day and we can always make up for it so we should not be uh, taken aback by these temporary uh, lapses or temporary uh, what you call uh, uh, defeats which we meet in life and we should not conclude that we are uh, losers just because we have not made it on a single day now let us see what are the habits which uh, we need to keep in mind to play this game every day so the gift called life uh gives us uh, some packages some free packages we get with this gift called life okay the first one is the physical package you and i have a physic no we have a body uh and we have and this body grows it grows from childhood into teenage then to adulthood and then to old age so we are gifted with a unique uh, body which is very complex and which is you know uh very wonderful it is very wonderful uh we are actually very wonderfully and fearfully made you take uh, the whole system in your body they are so closely linked to each other that one uh, particular system cannot function if another system is defective so if something small happens to your little finger you are affected you feel the pain in your entire body so we are gifted with a wonderful physical existence similarly we also have mental a mental presence we have we have a brain and with this brain we can think we can rationalize and we can learn so we have a mental self we also have an emotional self where we have feelings we have we can, we can feel happiness we can feel sadness uh you know we can we can feel stress uh we can get angry uh we can feel joy so we also have an emotional self and there is also what we call a spiritual self for winning we need to take into consideration all these four realms all these four realms we need to take into consideration and develop habits which are relevant to these four lab four realms so let us first take into consideration the habits we need for our physical self well uh every day we go to bed and get up now sleep is very important for our physical self see the in the game of cricket if you are going on playing constantly you get weird out and you are not able to perform well similarly in the game of life if you don't have enough of rest and if you don't have enough of sleep you will not be able to perform minimum you need 7 uh, to 8 hours of downtime in order to perform at your efficient best so the old day, old saying early to bed and early to rise makes a lot of sense i know that generation z doesn't believe in it because you you know you are on your um, devices late into the night and then you get up early you have to get up early so that you make it to college or school or wherever you're going to and uh, you don't have enough of sleep so this is uh, this really spells disaster because we were not built uh, to go on functioning like that our systems need downtime they need to recoup they need to uh, reassess their weaknesses and in order to ener energize themselves you need you need to recharge your batteries and the best way of doing it is to get a good night sleep now when you get up in the morning then it is very important that you develop this habit of you know mentally spending some time uh thinking about the day now this could be done spiritually or it could be done through meditation or it could be done through just you know 
drawing out a checklist of what you have for the day. If you make this a habit, it's a very good habit because it sets you up for the day. It sets you up for the day. You know what are the tasks which are going to be done and what you have to do. So you become mentally prepared for picking up whatever the day lies ahead of you in the day. So it's a very good habit to either have some prayer, spiritual meditation, or just a little bit of rational thinking where you make a list of things, checklist of things and want to, um, which you have to do during the day. Then it is also very important physically for you to be disciplined. You, know, you should follow a certain amount of discipline. So the discipline lies in keeping yourself clean, you know, keeping yourself, uh, your physical self, uh, your personality is very important. So dress appropriately, take pains so that you have, an, you have a pleasing personality and that you appeal to others. This is very important. So make it a habit that you develop your own uh, brand image. You know, if physically you should have your own brand image. So when you take, when you consider this person and this is how she looks and this is what she usually wears and this is how she combs her hair or she, uh, this is how she styles herself. So this is create a brand image for yourself by having some kind of discipline with the way you uh, take care of your physical self. Then it is also uh, very, uh, see these habits, these are habits because you do them. What are habits? Habits are nothing which, but repetitive behavior, which we keep do, doing day in and day out. And if we do it for a certain number of days, it becomes automatic then we don't have to think that we should do this. We automatically do it. So this is what is called a habit. Habits are there because they help us very much in life. They help us very much in life because after you have become used to doing a thing, you don't have to think about it. It becomes your second nature. You keep doing it without any pain, without any effort. So this is what habits are. And physically, if you develop these habits, then it sets you up in a very good state for life, right? So now you should have an intuitive understanding of your own self, right? So for this, uh, you need to really tune into your heart. Your heart or your emotions determine what really uh, gives you happiness. See, all of us are made differently. What gives me happiness does not give you happiness. You have something which your heart desires. Your heart says that your emotions, your emotions tell you that you feel good when you do this, or this is what you want to do. So all of us have it within our hearts as to what, is, what satisfies us, what gives us happiness. Now, this is very important. All of us should be able to you know, uh, introspect and find out what exactly it is that uh, we are cut out for. You know, some of us, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, particular thing is there in everybody. When uh, I was a child, I used to very much want to be a teacher. See, I, I, it was very intuitive. Uh, so like that, there are, see my grandchildren, when I look at them, they are also, they also have, uh, my, my eldest granddaughter wants to be a scientist. I don't know how she uh, got that, but she says, I want to be a scientist. So intuitively, uh, you know that you, the certain things you want to do, which make you happy. Uh, so you should have, you should be tuned into yourself to understand what is it that you intuitively need to uh, do. Now, when your heart tells you something, uh, to make it a success, your mind has to carry it out. So uh, you have to be mentally sharp, right? So to be mentally sharp is to adopt a logical approach towards accomplishing tasks, right? Now, uh, tasks may be simple, they may be difficult, but if we are able to uh, develop a logical approach towards accomplishing this task, it becomes much, much easier, right? So today, uh, this logical approach to uh, undertaking tasks uh, is likened to an algorithm. So even in the game of cricket, they write algorithms to understand the game of opponents. And accordingly, they, uh, in order to counter that algorithm, they write an algorithm by which they play the match to win it. 
right? So these algorithms are nothing but the logical approach towards accomplishing tasks. So once you have determined the tasks which you want to do, whatever you want to undertake, then uh, you have to develop a logical approach towards doing that. And this is done with the help of your mental alertness. For example, if you're doing your doctoral thesis, then you have to have a logical approach towards uh, doing the thesis, isn't it? First, you have to choose a topic. So how do you choose a topic? You don't uh, just go just like that and choose a topic. You have to read certain things. You have to see what you're interested in, what will keep you sustained for the next uh, one year or two years when you're doing this research. And then uh, what is feasible? So a lot of thinking, a lot of logical thinking goes into it before you could decide on a topic. Then after you've decided on the topic, then you, know, you have to read through a lot of relate, literature related to that topic. Then you have to you know, write reviews regarding the literature which you have read. Then you have to adopt a methodology by which you're going to plan a methodology by which you're going to undertake the research. Then after your methodology is through, then you have to test this by way of some hypothesis, by way of some preliminary uh, data collection and analysis. And then when that is done, then you're able to firm your hypothesis and then only decide on the correct topic and then go forward in order to collect your data and then analyze it, then uh, give your conclusions and then your thesis becomes ready. So you need a mental sharpness in order to accomplish these tasks. So you need to have logical reasoning and a logical approach. Then you need to get into the habit of you know, being mentally alert. Uh, now being mentally alert is uh, not only being aware of your surroundings, aware of what is happening in the world around you, but also learning some, something new every day. See, uh, our brain has immense storage capacity. And if we do not uh, fill it with things which are useful to us, it is distracted. It easily goes to things uh, which may not be very useful to us, or it easily leads us to things which are not desirable. So uh, they say the idle brain is a devil's workshop. So you have to keep your brain engaged. So keeping your brain engaged means you have to be involved in learning something right through. Uh, learning is a lifelong process and you have to keep learning not only when you're young, but right through, uh, through your entire life. So make it a point, make it a habit to learn something every day and to, uh, to relish whatever you learn and put it to use in your everyday life. Now, you also have to understand your limitations and weaknesses and find ways to overcome it. For again, you have to be mentally sharp here. See, when you are not, when you don't accomplish something, when uh, you're not able to uh, be successful at something, then you should understand your, why, you're not, why you're not being successful, identify the reason, and then try to overcome it. Again, you need mental alertness in doing this, right? For... Uh, uh, to draw an example uh, from life, uh, see, on the first attempt, if I'm not able to lift something, then it means that I don't have enough strength to do that, or my muscles are weak or whatever it is. So now I have to use a device in order to lift this. So I have to, or I have to call somebody else to do it. So that's the corrective action. This is a very simple way in which I'm putting it, but uh, really, uh, we have to understand our drawbacks. If, for example, a particular uh, topic we have taken, we are not able to proceed further in doing research or finding solutions in that area, then we have to think why, why we are not able to. We have to use our mental sharpness there. That should be a habit. That is, don't yield to uh, failure immediately. Make it a habit to analyze why you were not successful at the first attempt and see whether you can now revise it and do things in a better way. See, life throws up a lot of opportunities, right? Uh, and sometimes we catch hold of the wrong opportunity. So, and uh, when we are not successful, it just tells us that this is not your oyster or this is not your cup of tea. You just have to move, up, move on, move on to something else. So be mentally sharp in order to recognize. Don't just keep doing, repeat, uh, repeatedly doing things which you're not good at 
and then feeling depressed or getting uh, stunned or getting what you call about cowed down by failure, right? So you have to be mentally alert. Then uh, it's also very important to think out of the box. See, today, as I told you earlier, uh, when you talk of this should become a habit with you because you are living in a world, youngsters like you, you are living in a world where uh, artificial intelligence is taking over. So uh, we have to find ways in which we can uh, get ahead of the machine. In order to find ways to get ahead of the machine, it is not only uh, important to you know, to th think out of the box, it's also very important to innovate, right? So you have to be innovative. See, uh, since I understand that there are also teachers in this group, I should tell you that uh, education has gone through many stages. In the first stage, uh, we had education which was orally passed on from the guru to the sishya. And then in the next stage, uh, we had the printing machines which came into existence so books were available and they became the source of knowledge from which we could read and uh, we could impart knowledge to our students. Then after that came electronic equipments like typewriters, electronic typewriters, uh, calculators, and they were all aids which were used in order to enhance our learning. Then came the age of computers and with computers, then we knew that uh, you know, uh, things became much more easier for us. We had to learn how to use these computers and they became a method by which we could, uh, have, uh, we could impart education through, let us say, using an OHP or using a PowerPoint presentation. So that was the next stage. Then came internet. So when internet came, now this was a whole new game because we could access resources from different sources. So we could get resources from all over the world. Internet gave us the opportunity of getting resources from all over the world. But uh, still, uh, the uh, creativity still was a human prerogative. But today, with, uh, uh, with chat box and things like Brad coming up, machines have taken over creativity also. So you and I have to really uh, see that education refocuses. There is no more use for rote learning. Why should we go and uh, you know, uh, fill our brains with all this uh, rote information when it's all available out there? So education has to be transformed into how to use this knowledge in order to innovate and to stay ahead of the machine, to take up tasks which machine can, machines cannot do. You know, uh, all along human beings have been doing it. And uh, now the challenge for you, for young people, is to be trained in how to be innovative in order to overcome the uh, drawbacks or the downside of automation and uh, what you call uh, machines taking over different kinds of jobs. Now, you have to be, uh, let us take the example of some of the people who are very famous today. For example, if you take uh, 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 Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, he started his uh, uh, his concern from a garage, right? Similarly, uh, if you take Jeff Bezos, who's one of the, who owns Amazon and uh, who has really rev revolutionized uh, uh, the whole market with the help of all his online uh, uh, sales. You know, he also started very small. He started first by uh, selling books and then he made these books into electronic media and then he moved to other uh, FMCG uh, commodities and today uh, today he markets right through the world. So everybody started small. It's a small idea. So uh, instead of uh, focusing on rote learning and uh, concentrating on uh, recalling and uh, you know uh, writing exams and passing it, I don't say that that's not useful. But our whole system of examination has to be uh, revamped in order to uh, in order to uh, inculcate the apl applicability aspect of learning. So now you have to get into the habit of applying what you learn. When you apply what you learn to real life, then you will be able to innovate. And when you innovate, you get new ideas. So you should have new ideas. Don't get discouraged with that. It's Now it's an idea and how will I be able to do it by myself? All these people whom I just mentioned started it as a small idea. 
take Narayana Murthy and his Infosys. It was started as a small idea, which later on grew. This group of people started with a new idea and then it grew up. So don't be discouraged that your ideas are too small and that you are too inefficient. You have, in today's world, you need the courage and you need the, uh, you need to be fearless in order to go ahead, take challenges and move ahead. Because if you don't so do so, then the machines will be ahead of you. The machines will really get ahead of you. And I'm afraid that uh, that will lead to a world in which you will not be very useful. So if you want to be really useful, then get into the habit of nurturing new ideas, nurturing innovative ideas and carrying out Carrying out these ideas should not remain as just ideas, but they should be translated into actions. And then these actions can be upscaled in order to uh, make the world a better place, isn't it? Infosys has done so much with uh, regard to software development. It has made our life so easy with regard to so many aspects like banking and other things. And similarly, if you take, uh, if you take Amazon, uh, during the pandemic, it was very useful. We did not have to go out. We could just order things and it would come to our doorstep. Uh, E-commerce has really made life more easier for us. So you think of ideas which will be useful to you and useful to society at large so that you, know, you, will, be able to, uh, you, will, you will be able to carve a place for yourself in society. Now, this is very important. You have to get into this habit. So if you don't have a habit of thinking of new uh, of thinking out of the box, getting new ideas, and then uh, what you call uh, innovating on these ideas, taking action in order to carry it out, uh, it, you will not be a winner. To be a winner in today's world, it is very important to have this mental sharpness, the mental habit of thinking, uh, thinking differently, thinking out of the box, don't always go with the crowd. When you go with the crowd, you cannot become a winner. Of course, you need people who will support you, but take like-minded people, share your ideas, and then you work forward so that you can develop something into a use useful product which will be useful for society at a large. Then, uh, emotionally, now that is with regard to IQ, with regard to your IQ, uh, the good news for you youngsters is that you no know, rote learning is out. You no longer need to mug things, right? And uh, of course, the educational system hasn't changed still. I understand that, but uh, maybe some of you still have to rote learn, but that's only for a short period of time. And I know youngsters are good at it because I've seen uh, that they prepare only one day before the examinations and they do fantastically well. They score very high marks. All of you score in the 90s, very high marks by just studying one or two days prior to the examination. So passing an examination is not a very big deal nowadays. What is a big deal is trying to apply the knowledge which you have learned in order to uh, discover or invent something new or to get ahead. Uh, that, is the, that is the challenge. So that is, in a, that is the IQ, IQ aspect, habits related to IQ. Now coming to your emotional quotient, which is very, very important uh, because emotions play a very uh, important role in winning or losing in life, right? So if a cricketer is not uh, positive about his game, he cannot win. So if he goes in with uh, feeling diffident, he will definitely be, uh, his wicket will definitely be lost. So same thing with life. So unless you move ahead with confidence, so you need to develop the habit of confidence. Be confident about yourself. Whatever you do, try to develop the habit of confidence. There is fear, always fear is there, but fear only should help you to build confidence. For example, when I started public speaking in the beginning, it was very difficult you know, uh, to face an audience. Your heart would beat and you'd sweat and uh, words wouldn't come out of your mouth and all that, but if you, I was determined to get over it. And I went on, uh, first time was difficult, second time was a little bit easier, third time was easier still. Fourth time it became, you know, very easy for me. It was easy to do public speaking. It was not at all difficult. So uh, this courage, you know, this it should make courage a habit. So overcome your fears to make courage a habit. So unless you're courageous and you're confident, 
it is very difficult for you to win. So if you want to win, courage, confidence is very important. Being positive and proactive, again, very, very important. So life throws a lot of missiles at you, right? Now you can choose whether to be hurt by it or to throw it back, okay? So uh, sometimes people, people may be very rude to you. So when they are rude to you, uh, you just don't get depressed. You, you have the option of giving it back to them in the same coin, or you have the option of doing just the opposite, of just saying it doesn't affect me. Uh, and therefore, you know, I'm not going to be um, uh, taken aback by this, right? So when people criticize you, you have to be uh, not reactive, but proactive, right? Uh, for instance, uh, there was one instance where, uh, uh, when I was in Madras University, when uh, uh, there was a problem and uh, uh, one of the one of the governor's secretaries who was along with me was very angry with me and she kept uh, telling me why didn't you listen to me why did you do, do this and do that i had my own reason for not listening and therefore we were on actually we were on a public platform and uh, we had to we had to speak so uh, she was telling me uh, she was giving me a, a bit of her mind uh, not in very complimentary terms and uh, soon after that, I was called to speak. So I went and I gave my speech as usual. So when I came back, uh, she asked me, I said so many negative things about you. How the hell did you go and give such a good speech? She asked me. So I told her, Madam, that hat did not suit me. Right? So this is being proactive. Not being reactive, but being proactive. So if some things are not, it doesn't affect you, don't allow it to affect you. Uh, you have to be emotionally strong to do that. Uh, so you have to cultivate this as a habit, as a habit of being proactive rather than reactive. When missiles are thrown at you, you can catch it and keep it, right? And you can convert it into something useful, right? After that, she became a big friend of mine. There was no hard feeling regarding that. And taking stress in your stride, life is very stressful at times, you know, and then... Uh, if, if we are under stress, then we don't perform well, right? So if you are under stress, then make it a habit to de-stress yourself. So see what, uh, what, what exactly you need to do to de-stress yourself. Sometimes listening to music calms you down. You get, your stress becomes lower. Sometimes you just have to sleep it off so that your stress goes off. You know, sometimes uh, when I'm so stressed out, my brain doesn't shut down. So when I sleep, uh, it keeps coming back to me in dreams. Repetitively, it keeps coming back to me. And in the morning when I get up, I get up with a bad headache or I get up fully stressed out, unable to take on any new tasks for that day. So when such a situation arises, sometimes I just take a mild sedative and go to sleep so that I get, you know, the medicine puts me to sleep, my brain shuts down. Once my brain shuts down, then it kind of... Uh, the next morning I get up fresh and I say, okay, that's over. That was yesterday. Today is a new day. Let's take on the challenge and do things new today. So see that you have a habit of de-stressing yourself. Don't carry the stress from one day to the next. Always de-stress yourself. If you have quarreled with somebody, settle the argument before you could go to bed. You know, don't uh, keep on, keep on uh, carrying it forward because that doesn't help you to perform. And it only uh, reduces your ability to be efficient. Then you have also to develop the habit of empathy. Okay, uh, you have to understand others emotionally. This is very important. So if for your emotional, uh, for your EQ, it is very important that you should have empathy. Put yourself into the other person's shoe. If somebody is behaving in a particular manner, try to understand why they are doing that. And if you are able to have empathy, then it is easier for you to deal with these situations, right? So uh, I understood that that particular lady who made the accusation had some political, you know, uh, she had some political agenda uh, to fulfill. And that was her duty. So she was just carrying out her duty. I was carrying out my duty. And therefore, I was able to empathize with her. And therefore, we were able to, you know, get over the issue and uh, settle it there itself. 
So you have to develop empathy where you have to understand uh, the, the, the shoes in which the other person is standing and why they are behaving like that so that you are able to develop your own strategy of coping with uh, people who are not uh, having the same idea of yours or who are in the opposing camp. Okay, so then you have to, before this, to develop empathy, you have to develop the habit of being a good listener. So don't just keep talking, keep saying your point of view. Listen to what the other person is saying. It's very important to be a good listener. Then you also need to think before you speak because it's easy at, the, uh, at an instant, you can speak something, you can say which you regret later. So before you speak, always think have some thought as to how it is going to affect the other person. So this is also part of empathy. So if that person has put you down, do you wish to put that person down? No, that should not be your aim. So you should be able to develop empathy. And in order to do that, you need to think before you speak. Also, you know, need to be clear in communicating your feelings. Very often stress develops when we don't communicate our feelings. So let us make it a habit to communicate our feelings nicely in a positive manner to the concerned persons. So if you have a disagreement with your boss, go and have a chat, talk it out. Or you say, you, you just say very frankly, this is how I feel. See, feelings are neither good or bad. So you don't, you don't, you have to put it positively. This is how I feel. But nevertheless, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do that. But this is how I feel. So if you if you're able to tell people in authority how you feel, then they will also think and the next time they deal with you, uh, they will deal with you in a manner uh, which is compliant with you. So make it a habit to communicate your feelings and be honest with the relevant persons. So don't always cover up. See, if you say that if you're not well and you say, no, I'm OK, that's not good, because if you say I'm OK, then that person may give you some tasks which you're not able to perform well. So if you're not okay, just tell that person, today is not my day and I may do it another day. So maybe that would help out both, both parties would be, help, would be help, greatly helped by doing that. So communicate, communicate honestly, communicate with the person concerned, always. Don't communicate through a third party because this always leads to what is called as gossip and hearsay and what is called as grapevine, which is not... Uh, not the official way of communicating. There may be many mistakes. You know what happens in gossip. One thing gets repeated many times and then you, you have something which is totally false coming out at the other end. So communicate with the person, concerned person and tell the concerned person how you feel. Don't communicate through a third party. It is always dangerous to do so. So make sure that you have habits like this. Then a uh, we are all also not just uh, in flesh and bones and we are not just, just mind and body and emotions, but we are also spiritual beings. You and I, uh, we have a part of the whole creation within us, right? So the, a part of the creator is in us. So in that way, we also have, we should also have some spiritual habits. So when I say spiritual habits, uh, I'm not referring to any religion. Uh, some of you may be uh, religious, uh, so uh, please pray. Uh, prayer is very useful. Develop a habit of praying. If you are not religious, then also doesn't matter. Uh, you should believe in some values. You know, I've come across atheists who are very good people. They don't believe in God, but they believe in human values and they practice those human values uh, sometimes much better than people who believe in religion and God. Now, I'm not saying that I support them, but what I'm saying is that religion should lead you to good values, to the values of truth, honesty, uh, you know, um, always uh, uh, doing the right things. So if, not taking shortcuts. All this comes when you have spiritual strength. So when your values are right, then you will always do, you'll always uh, be inclined to do the right things. So develop an attitude, uh, develop the habit of uh, being spiritually upright. When I say spiritually upright, it means that adhering to basic human values, the value of truth, the value of honesty, the value of uh, doing things the right way, not taking shortcuts, uh, not telling lies, 
not uh, taking advantage, undue advantage of others, things like this. You know, if you have values, if you're value driven, uh, if if your habits, your habits will also be value driven. And if somebody asks you to do something which is not correct, uh, you will immediately have the courage to tell them, no, I cannot do it, right? So there are many, many times people have come and said, you know, if you do this for me, then I will give you this benefit. When you are in, when you're in authority, it happens very frequently. You know, it's a quid called a quid pro quo. So uh, you do this for me, I will do this for you. When I know it is not right, I will downright tell them, no way, no way, thank you. You know, I can't do it. That's it. So that that should be it should become second nature to you. If it becomes second nature to you, it becomes easier for you to handle it. Right? Then also very important the ability to forgive and forget. Now, uh, uh, this is very important. Uh, if we are not able to forgive and forget, then we carry these things in our mind. And it becomes a big hindrance to our progress. You know, it's like uh, the TV ads, okay? Now, when you're watching a particular program, repetitively, those ads keep coming and they're very irritating. So when you don't forget, forgive somebody, you will always be reminded of it. When whatever you're doing, those thoughts will come back to you. And when those thoughts come back, all the negative feelings which are associated with those thoughts will also come back. And what happens is then uh, your, whole, your whole system reacts very badly. You know, your whole physical system reacts to those kind of feelings. When somebody has done some injustice to you and you cannot forgive them, then what happens is every time you're reminded of that incident, uh, the uh, hormones like adrenaline and cortisol get secreted within your hormone system. And this kind of uh, leads to your heart to beat faster, your blood pressure to go up, your sugar levels to rise, all this happens. Most of the major diseases come into existence only because we cannot forgive. So if you are able to forgive, if you forgive, you will forget, right? If you don't forgive, you will not forget, right? So forgive, forgive and forget. So this will give you, this will help you to maintain not only your mental equilibrium, but also your physical equilibrium. It is only accumulated stress, accumulated harmful hormones, which cause all these lifestyle diseases like obesity, uh, blood, blood pressure, uh, sugar, uh, even things like cancer and thing, things, uh, undesirable diseases come only because of accumulated stress and accumulated uh, uh, what you call grievances and grudges which we have. So make it a habit to forgive and forget. See, nothing is permanent in this world, right? Everything changes. Every day, God has given us a new day. And every day, you know, the new day brings in new opportunities. And you may have lost yesterday, but today you can win. Uh, it is not difficult for you to uh, win today because uh, the tide doesn't swim in one direction alone. Nature doesn't permit anything to move in one direction. It always creates an opposing and equivalent force. We all know that. So remember that in your life. Make it a habit to forgive and forget. If something negative has happened, give it up. The next day is a new opportunity. The tide will flow in a different direction, provided you allow, arrive it to flow, you allow it to flow. Supposing you build a dam and you want it to flow only in that direction, you will not be able to change your mind. So in case you meet with failure or meet with the uh, with uh, with the what you call disappointment, just move away. Make it a habit to move away. Right? You should know exactly when to move away from something when it is not favorable to you. So that also has to become a habit. Right? So when you see things are not going your way, and that uh, uh, supposing you're not able to get along with your boss and uh, it's not a good situation. You are stressed out every day and it's affecting your health. Quit. Just quit. And then try for another opportunity. Opportunities are all around you. See, when it is raining in one place, it is always sunny in another. So uh, whether you want to stay back in the atmosphere where there is a storm or you want to move to a sunny, uh, sunny state of affairs is your choice. God has given you that freedom to choose. So 
if you are not exercising that freedom, if you are choosing to stay in the unhealthy atmosphere, then that is your problem. It is not you are not not you are you are barring yourself for, from winning by your own actions. It's your own choice which has um, made you to uh, stay in the bad situation. So no situation is always bad, right? So move on, move on, move on from a bad situation. Move on, go on, go further. When you go further, you will find other opportunities. When one door closes, many doors may open, and you will be able to. Uh, do better in those areas. Okay. Uh, today in the newspaper, for instance, I read about uh, our police commissioner, Shailendra Babu, um, DGP of police. He dreamt of becoming a uh, of becoming a doctor, and he studied very hard to do so. But unfortunately, you know, uh, the rules changed, and uh, he had he even rewrote his 12th standard exams to get better marks. But then they said that somebody who had the subjects he had taken was wrong, so he could not get into medical college. So what happened was he took agriculture. He went to agricultural university, and there he met somebody who was who inspired him to take up the civil services. So he took it up seriously. He studied for the civil services, and he became an IPS officer. And today he is the DGP of police. Today, so if he had to be discouraged, saying I couldn't join medicine and sit down like that. We would not have had such a very inspiring person as the uh, director general of police today. So these are all examples in our lives. There are many examples. So please don't be discouraged when things are not going your way. So move ahead, move to the next realm of thing. And lastly, before I could end, I would just like to say that uh, we are all here in this world for a purpose, right? I told you in the beginning itself that we are all winners. There is nobody who is a loser in this life. You know, the creator does not create rubbish. He creates things of value. You and I are valuable. You and I are, uh, are there to win, right? Temporary setbacks may be there, but we are there to win. We are there for a purpose. And the purpose is to make a difference in the world. Okay, the purpose is to make a difference in the world. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to perform at the international level or at the national level or at the state level. No, no, no levels are there. But you have to make a difference. You have to make a difference to the people around you, to the world around you. So whatever you can do, which makes a difference to the world around you, makes you a winner, right? So there are huge environmental problems we are suffering, global warming. We can't all solve it. But if all of us make a decision to be disciplined, you know, to reduce the use of energy, to reduce travel, to reduce our carbon footprints, we can make a difference. We can make a difference. You and I can make a difference, right? If we all uh, <clears throat> decide that uh, we are going to, uh, you know, uh, love one another, instead of spreading hate and spreading dissent, or that we are going to be more tolerant with one another, then we can make the place we live in better, right? If we all decide that we are going to forgive and forget, and that we are going to move ahead in life, we can make a difference. We can make a difference in the environment in which we live. So that is, that is what we say, uh, you are making a, you, you are important and you are winning. You're making a difference, you're winning. So every day, if when you go back to bed, think whether you have made a difference somewhere, okay? It need not be an earth-shaking difference. It could be just a very small thing, a small friendly gesture, a person whom you helped on the road. So when you go to bed and you think of it, it gives you immense satisfaction and that has made your day. You are a winner. So every night, if you can go to bed satisfied, then you are a winner. Or if you have regrets, then, the next day you decide to correct whatever the regrets were there and the next day you can become a winner. So life throws up many opportunities like the game of cricket. You don't always win the match, but you could be in the state team, you could be in the college team, you could be in the university team, possibilities are there. So you can really move from one level to the other level, even though you are not, don't have a trophy. And finally, what are these trophies? Winning is always associated with the trophy. Okay, so what are these trophies? Trophies are things, uh, things uh, which uh, 
uh, what you call our uh, rewards for you, rewarding things. Okay, so now don't wait for the Nobel Prize or don't wait for some national recognition like a Padma Sri Award or whatever that is. Okay, we have many trophies, right? Life gives us many trophies. For example, uh, my friends here, uh, my friends like Angel and uh, Jainty and all, these are trophies because uh, somewhere along the way, we have created memories with each other. So they are trophies for me. If they are my friends, they are my trophies. All my students are my trophies because I have influenced them in some way or the other. I have touched their lives in some way or the other. So they are my trophies. All the institutions where I worked, all the programs which I created, they are my trophies. Okay, They are my trophies and they will live even after I am not existing. Right, So they will live on. They are my legacies. Right, So aim at creating such legacies. Okay, So that, that makes you an eternal winner. So you're not winner only in this life, but you are an eternal winner because you have left your footprints on the sands of time. So create a legacy, whatever you do, create a legacy. Uh, it may be a small legacy, but it is a trophy for you, right? So if you want to be a winner, create these trophies, right? So finally, uh, to close, I would just like to remind you of the words of Rabindranath Tagore. He said, I slept and dreamt that life is joy. I woke and found that life is service. I served and I found that service is joy. So I would like to wish you a life of service, a life of winning, a life where you leave behind a lot of trophies. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was rich and uh, that was powerful and resourceful. Um, and you had a message for all of us who have been listening to you and to the for the youth especially and to teachers and parents there's a thumb rule that we need to follow um, and ma'am has very beautifully showed that if you are dealing with the young generation who are ai supported machine uh, learning is a new normal for them then you need to speak their language so very beautifully uh, you had brought in the analogy of the arena the cricket match in which they play and uh, the coherence and the thought process with which you brought us through. Uh, it's been very, very powerful, ma'am, and um, deeply, deeply inspiring as always. Uh, thank you so much. And um, habits die hard uh, when we become conscious of habits. Uh, there is a need for us to unlearn and relearn in the four realms for the youth, for parents, for teachers, for all of us. So thank you so much for such a powerful and inspiring uh, session. Uh, we open the floor for questions. So participants, if it's possible, you can unmute yourself and take this opportunity to ask questions. And um, in case you're not able to unmute, you can post your questions in the chat box. So ma'am, while we wait for questions, I have a few things that I would like to ask you. Oh, sure, sure. Yes, ma'am. I take this opportunity to do so. I remember uh, like you were with us at Holy Cross and I was a very young uh, faculty then, maybe just joined. And uh, that was the time we had rescapes, uh, uh, all those things that uh, came into the forefront. So you were forerunners of uh, such service. So uh, then you moved on as the first registrar of Madras University, woman registrar of uh, Madras University. So ma'am, just would like to know, how was your first day as the woman registrar of Madras University? The first day was very exciting. Uh, the whole university was curious who this lady is, uh, uh, who's occupying this chair. Um, and they had all trooped in with bouquets and kind of things uh, to wish me. Uh, I was very actually diffident because I had, the um, first thing is I had moved from a college to university. So, uh, you know, the university professors all looked at me with some disdain. Who is this lady? And she's coming from a college. So what the hell is she going to do here? And how the hell is she going to manage this situation with us? So I could see the challenge in there. Then another thing is that she's a woman also. 
so that is the next thing. my next question was next that thing, actually yeah, yeah. so uh, they were all i could understand the disdain so uh, i that night i could hardly sleep because i was so worried whether i can measure up to this situation you know but then uh, dr sp tyagarajan who was the vice chancellor of the university uh, he was very good in the sense uh, he was able to guide me through different stages i just had to follow what he was telling and then he told me see when these files come you know i didn't have this experience of handling files and things like that so he told me when files come you have to go through the precedents you know first thing uh, first thing which he which i did was to get familiar with the rules of the university the uh, what you call uh, the rule book of the university so that was i had actually even prior to my interview i had uh, become familiar with the rules of the university so that is what helped me to go through the interview so being conversant with the rules i was always able to give the right uh, uh, ruling on the files or go through the earlier uh, uh, orders and then accordingly write out an order so uh, the first first week when people saw my orders coming you know there was no delay one thing was the files were not remaining on my desk they were all cleared the same day uh, i just i told uh, all my professors that sir give me 24 hours don't stand here and ask for the reply i will not be able to give it to you give me 24 hours and you will get a reply so i kept to my promise within 24 hours they would get a order which would be either yes or no or uh, an answer to what they had put so that really impressed them so they said at least there is no backlog here even if it's a no we are able to get a no immediately uh, they were very happy you know so uh, that way i was able to carry the day with me uh, there were challenges there were challenges uh, non teaching staff particularly uh, if to deal with a large number of non teaching staff uh, right from the janitor you know onwards till the uh, pa pa to the vice chancellor all these people and uh, there was a lot of polarization also i was like uh, uh, what you say mm, i was i was very different for one thing i was a woman and i was a christian i did not fall into any of their caste categories uh, they could not guess what i was that is another thing you know they always were looking for places where they could corner and get me into their groups the different groups but none of them could get me into any of the groups fortunately uh, i i should thank god for that that i was always able to keep myself neutral and away from these groups so that again was a plus point it was a plus point then again uh, you know when you are a man uh, after uh, after hours people would uh, become friendly take you out for dinner have a drink here there and then accomplish their tasks they couldn't do it with me i was a woman so <laughs> i would sit there up till 7 o'clock 8 o'clock clear all my files and then go home so that is how or even if i was not able to clear my files i would take them home and deal with them next morning the files would be ready so that way uh, i was able to win over them in one month uh, there was a lot of appreciation people really uh, understood uh, that i was performing doing my very best thank you so much ma'am that was uh, that was a challenging uh work but at the same time since you were well informed prepared uh, ethically ro- uh, rooted and spiritually anchored you have set behind uh, a footprint that many people would love to follow thank you so much ma'am by the way rescapes is a trophy yes <laughs> yes ma'am yes <laughs> sure um one last question ma'am if we yeah. don't have anything from the audience what are your winning habits ma'am almost all the things which i have told you are yeah. my winning habits uh, i am a very uh, what you call that way uh, uh, you know habits die hard with me uh, it's very difficult to for me to break through any of these habits sometimes people uh, especially in my inner circle you know in uh, now it's only my husband and me sometimes he finds it very difficult to cope with my habits <laughs> he says you know just forget you are not no longer the registrar now you don't have <laughs> so 
relax why are you you're retired also so now why do you want you know i just getting up early and then keeping a schedule for the day and then ticking off things doing this doing that and some things i will have for him so i will say why not you do this she says just cool it why are you so th- <laughs> you don't have to so sometimes uh, it really it irritates people uh, when i uh, kind of uh, stick to my guns and say that no, this has to be done. <laughs> but that w- worked effectively in those environments it doesn't work very effectively with family i should tell you <laughs> but uh, that keeps you young at heart mind and spirit ma'am yeah. uh, that can be assured um, there are a lot of uh, participants who have thanked you for your inspiring speech in the chat box uh one last time i would like to know if there are any questions from the participants if you have a question you can either raise your hand your virtual hand or you can post it in the chat box so um uh, as we wind up uh, this session let me wind it up with a grateful heart because a grateful heart multiplies all gifts a note of gratitude to the speaker of the session dr ann mary fernandez for taking time to lucidly and effectively share her valuable insights uh, on uh, habits for winning i am sure ma'am all of us have benefited not only the participants but once the video is up on the youtube many of them would be able to take in a lot of tips from what you have shared a special note of gratitude to the members of we for youth team who passionately work to make it better for the youth by helping to understand the challenges that the youth face emotionally physically and in myriad other ways the team takes time to create content for parents and teachers to support youth and for youth themselves to leverage opportunities and success dear we for youth team your work is greatly appreciated i also thank mrs lindsay mrs jacqueline dr paulin for their participation behind the screens a special note of thanks to all the participants who have joined the live meet and all who would take time to watch it on the we for youth youtube channel and website may our everyday healthy habits help us to be the person who we are created to be and meant to be thank you thank you